On this video, let's compare a Far Eastern made resonator copy with a real 1935 American made one. Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard Resonators. On this video, we're very simply going to compare this Far Eastern made guitar with this 1935 made national guitar. Uh, I'm going to just look at some of the details and we're going to compare those. We're also going to do some sound clips and compare the two. And within the next five or ten minutes, you should have a very good idea about how typical Far Eastern made resonators are made and how they sound. So let me give you some backstory and then we'll get into the comparisons and the details. So basically, um, um, I've been wanting to make this video ever since we started doing YouTube videos when we were locked down with coronavirus. And it's a video which I think is going to help a lot of people. So um, one of the most common questions that we get, you know, to our Facebook and Instagram and email is people saying, oh, you know, I found your videos and I'm looking at buying a resonator. Are these any good? And they'll send you a link. And it's nearly always, um, you know, a relatively inexpensive Far Eastern made resonator guitar. Um, usually, often these, these, these emails come from America, but not exclusively. And usually they're in the sort of five, six, seven hundred dollar uh, bracket or, you know, pound bracket or, or, or um, um, you know, euro bracket, Australian dollars, Croatian shekels, whatever it is that, you know, whatever your denomination is in your, in your lands. Um, people want to know it's that kind of that kind of end. Now, um, last week, a buddy of mine, uh, Dick Appleton, who actually we're going to be doing an interview on the podcast that's coming out in the next sort of uh, few weeks. We've got a podcast, the Washboard Resonators present. Uh, Dick Appleton's been in music all his life, so we're going to interview him there. Um, do check it out. Anyway, Dick came along and said, "I'm just selling some guitars for a friend of mine who can't really play anymore." He's got this resonator, I can get it very cheap, would you be interested? Now, I just bought this because it was cheap enough to make this video and then I'll just sell it on. I'm not fussed about making a profit or anything like that. Um, this is simply so I can share it with you. So what have we got here? I've, I've shone a light through the F-holes. I think that this is a, is a chromed steel body. You can see the edge of the metal that's welded inside, and I don't see any kind of goldy, brassy kind of colour. I think it's steel. It's it's hard to tell um, sound-wise. Um, so what I've done is, what I think is the nearest thing that I've got is this 1935 made, American made, authentic, genuine, national Jewelian. So, yeah, it's not going to be the most... Um, perfect um, comparison. This has relatively thin phosphor bronze strings, about maybe 12, probably 12s I think, 11s or 12s. This has 16 gauge nickel strings, so these are fatter and nickel strings are generally a little bit warmer. But we'll get an idea. So there's a few details to talk about really. The first thing is that this guitar I would say probably weighs double what the old one does. This is a, a heavy, heavy guitar. Um, it's got a mahogany neck, which is made with this kind of scarf joint at the end. So that's a, that's a piece of mahogany added onto the end there. Um, it's 14 fret joint to the body, semi-rolled F holes, um, single comb, what's called a biscuit bridge system, um, the tailpiece. Um, the dimensions are very similar. I'd say it's just slightly thicker. The body width is slightly slightly thicker than the other one. So looking at this, what do we think? Well, generally speaking, the quality of it is pretty decent. And I see it's got a Made in Korea sticker on it. I would guess that this is probably early, mid 2000s, maybe 2010. So when I started uh, looking into resonators, you know, all my life I'd been listening to old blues and buying my document record sets and all that kind of stuff and listening to old blues, getting all the blues books, all the pictures of guys with resonators. I was fascinated by them. Now, I didn't know anybody that owned any old resonators. 
So I just used to go into music shops, and at the time, in the 2000s, when I was really kind of getting into this stuff, the only time you'd ever play Resonator really was one of these newer Oriental Far Eastern copies. And I remember year after year going in these places and playing these instruments and going, oh God, what a shame, you know, Resonators are rubbish. I thought that they were meant to be louder than normal guitars because that's everything you'd read in all the books. And I think it only really kind of struck me um, was when I went into, uh, in, in Britain, we have a chain of shops called Hobgoblin. And um, they they kind of do folk music and stuff. And I went to one, they had a second-hand National Resophonic Tricone. And I remember playing this, and this is a long time ago now, goodness me, this would be about 2007. I'm filming this in 2022. So I was in my, probably my mid-20s-ish. Mid and um, I remember playing this second-hand tricone and it sounded so loud and i guess that's when i realized that a lot of the oriental copies weren't very good um so that opened me up to, to getting hold of decent resonators and then meeting other people that had them and now i have a lot of vintage ones and i think i've got a pretty decent handle now of you know what quality resonators are so therefore i've not really played an instrument like this for well over 10 years now and since I bought it I barely even played this so I'm going to be doing this in sort of real time with you when we do the sound clips shortly and we're going to see what we find. So before we get to the sound clips um, do help me and Jack in the washboard resonators we are professional musicians the best way to help is just to go down there and like and subscribe leave a comment go to the little triangle down here and in the description you'll find a link to the mailing list you can buy us a coffee the mailing list is best because we just would love to tell you when we've got gigs when we've got music coming out that's the best way for us to get the word out about what we do okay then let's hear this oriental resonator let's go for it so first things first you know this is where you can comment and give us your opinion first things first how does that sound to you? So first things first, what do you think? I will be giving some thoughts at the end um, about this. There's a few things that I've noticed already which I think will, will help make sense of this instrument. One of the first things I notice is that this instrument is, is very dynamic. So when you play it gently, it sounds like a resonator. It's very quiet and thin. When you sort of dig in, it kind of you know, it gets a lot louder and it compresses a lot. Let's just try that. So there, you might have heard a weird noise in the tuning change. The first thing there, the, the string jumped out of the bridge. When I do sell this on after I've shot this video, if anybody is out there wants to just buy this as a cheap thing to play on, to practice on, to get into resonators, you know, that's great. I'm in Leeds, in the centre of England. Um, I'm always travelling around the country, so, you know, do get in touch. Um, you might just want to just uh, knock a little kind of uh, extra kind of uh, uh, thing, whole thing in there. If you play it gently, it's fine. The other thing I notice is that because it's got a, a quite a, 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 a strong radius to the, the, the fretboard, the strings are radiused quite highly at the bridge. So one of the things I notice is straight away is I get quite, you know, I've got to sort of really think about technique with this guitar. I've got to really think about um, not getting slide noise. As I'm pressing down the strings that are in the middle that are higher than the outside strings, you get you can get rattle if you're not careful, if you don't have really good technique. You can hear it, you can hear it as it goes down. sizzle as I take the slide off. You have to really mute it. <laughs> OK, 
Okay then, so we've just got a brief idea of this instrument and how it kind of plays. I'm now going to compare it to the 1935 Real National. And, um, heck, let's see how they sound. <laughs> playing them both quietly now. Let's now maybe try something a bit louder. So can you hear much difference? Well, look, I'm going to just give a few little thoughts about these and then we'll finish up the video. Uh, thank you for listening so far. It's much appreciated. Pop your comments below if you think these do sound better or worse or similar. If you've got any thoughts about um, um, resonators and, and, and copy resonators, do pop them below because I love to make these videos resources for people. Um, my thoughts are this, that this instrument is much heavier and basically, it sounds much thinner. It, so it sounds like a resonator. It plays like a resonator. This is something that I think, given that secondhand or used, as Americans say, these tend to sell for somewhere around the kind of, in this country, in Britain, about £400, which is maybe, maybe $500-odd, you know, as a kind of idea. Um... So if you're at that budget, if you're starting out, you know, you want to play Delta Blues or, or whatever, early jazz or whatever, you know, whatever, Americana, and that's the money you've got, this is great. You get into it, you do what you've got to do. If you're going to gig this, you put a pickup on it, you can, for about £70, you can buy a pickup that would stick underneath. You, know, you could have the guitar modified, you've got a gigging guitar. I think you'd be fine. I do think this guitar is... Basically a bit thinner sounding and a little bit kind of quieter. It doesn't have anything like the richness um, of the other one. Um, I think one of the things I, I've noticed over the years with a lot of the kind of cheaper made Far Eastern instruments is, you know, in the factories, as I'm, as I'm, I'm aware I've been told by somebody else that has a business in these, a lot of factories in the Far East, uh, a set of blueprints go in the thing is built as per the blueprints and a box load, you know, a container load of guitars comes out. The people making the guitars aren't even really checking them or aware what the instrument should actually do or how it should actually sound. But as long as you've ticked the boxes in terms of fulfilling the, um, the blueprint, it's a guitar shaped thing and it will work more or less like a guitar. And I think that's where these guitars can often fall down. It's like they get seven tenths of the way towards where they could be. And these can be made to be much better. One of the biggest issues with any resonator is often the quality of the cone. And that is a real art, spinning a cone that's as thin as possible without being too thin and buckling under the, the string pressure. That is a big skill. And I don't necessarily think that the quality goes into necessarily the cones in, in a lot of Far Eastern instruments. And that will kill the tone to a large degree. Um, it's hard to see through the, through the little um, uh, cover plate holes as to what the cone is in there. I see it's got ribs, 
I don't think it's any good. I think the biggest letdown on this guitar is the biscuit. I'll show, I'll flag a picture up of, of the biscuit and the, the saddle, the bridge saddle. There's, 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 a, there's a lot of debate on the forums and Facebook pages and all that kind of stuff with resonator players about what material to use for your saddles. And I think, you know, I see a lot of people come on and comment, luthiers, other people, that have this idea that if you use better quality woods, you're going to get a better quality sound. That's very intuitive when you think about acoustic instruments normally. The thing that's counterintuitive about resonator instruments is that that biscuit and saddle want to be made out of relatively cheap wood. So often you might have maple for the, 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 the biscuit, the little round bit, and then English boxwood, very, very thin, soft wood um, for the saddle. This one's got an ebony biscuit and an ebony kind of cap to the saddle. And my experience of, of instruments that I've seen where that modification has been done is that when you put ebony, which is a very hard wood, you might think that that's going to create more tone. It actually tends to sort of kill the volume and, and the, 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 the width and the thickness of, of the tone of a resonator. I think, I think if you um, change this saddle and this biscuit bridge to a normal National Resophonic one, made out of the normal maple, boxwood, cheaper wood, I think this thing would would, would you know, widen and get louder and bloom a little bit more. I think that biscuit, and you can't blame anybody, they've put nice, nice quality wood in that biscuit setup. I think that's doing a lot of the damage there. I think I've got a spare National Resophonic one, a new uncut one that would have come from America. If anybody wants to buy this instrument off me, I'll have to dig it out of a drawer, but I'll throw that in and you can take it and get it set up to your kind of specifications. I think that would probably open it up quite a lot. I think between when this instrument was probably made and now in 2022, there can be more of a difference in terms of um, Far Eastern made instruments. So I still see instruments like this in shops, brand new, that sound like this. They sound relatively thin, relatively quiet. Um, they have build issues and they're fine if that's where your budget is. We've all got to start somewhere. Um, you know, that's fine. There are um, brands like, my favourite by a long shot is, is Michael Messer. He's a British slide guitar, um, just genius, and, and, and one of the world's leading authorities on these by far. He has his own brand that are made in China, but it's a different factory from all the other resonator factories. And he has a, a quality control procedure there and when they arrive in Britain to be set up. So his um, Far Eastern made instruments are actually I'd say they're basically the equal of a lot of American-made ones for a much cheaper price. Um, there are other brands there. I'm not going to mention any other brands because I don't want to get into... There are ups and downs, but there are other brands out there that I've seen. Chinese-made instruments. I'm thinking of the brands that now. I don't want to say, say them, but... Um, you know, I've played some really nice Far Eastern-made resonators that were made in the last, say, five, six, seven years that are perfectly good. Still sustaining. Yeah, you could go and get a bite and that'll still be ringing. So look, I, I'm going to finish this video here. I think I've prattled on a lot there, but, um, you know, I've just done this very stream of consciousness. No planning, no notes. I just wanted to sort of play this thing, share this thing, share my thoughts. Um, and I hope that, you know, it helps people out there kind of get a, a grasp of, um, you know, first of all, Generally, what the quality gets you, what the, what you get for your money, um, but also that, you know what, it's not all doom and gloom. Just because this instrument doesn't sound as good as, or as big maybe as the old vintage National, it still sounds great, it's still perfectly usable, still a great thing to learn on, play on, put a pickup gig, no issues there. And I've also tried to share a little bit about things you could do to try and just open them out a little bit, perhaps a change of cone, Perhaps definitely checking what material the biscuit and the, and, and the bridge is made out of. You could, you know, definitely improve this thing. And for a very sort of relatively cheap price, 
you could have a perfectly decent, perfectly usable resonator. And if you're not snobbish about things, I think that is perfectly decent. So thank you very much, everybody. My name is Martin. The band is the Washboard Resonators. And again, if you want to help us, like, subscribe, uh, join the mailing list. Uh, these are all things that help massively. Thank you for making it this far. It is much appreciated and uh, hope to see you all again soon. Bye bye for now. Listen to everything resonating.